Okay. Uh, business loves math. Let's talk about that. When you first start a business, you may want to determine how to maximize revenue rather than maximize your profits. There is a difference. Revenue is mu how much money you bring into your business due to the sales of your product you produce. Profit is how much money you take home. Profit is revenue less the it profit is revenue less the cost of buying the goods and services to produce your product. You subtract all expenses during the year or the time of operation, which could be monthly. You incur from the revenue money you bring in, and this is your profit. The problem with profits is how it's defined. Profits can be an increase in assets, a decrease in liabilities, or just an increase in owner's value in the company or the business. Profit maximization is when a business can sell a product so that its marginal revenue equals its marginal cost when the, margin, when the value of the marginal cost is rising. Wow, that's a lot. This is what that means. There will become a time, there will come a point in the production and sale of your business product that if you sell one more unit of product, your business would lose money because the cost of producing that unit or product would exceed the price on, of the unit on the market. Let's, can, let's keep going. So I'm going to explain that by illustrating this with the maximization of revenue problem. Essentially, when you maximize revenue, your business is concentrating on gaining satisfied customers. How do you get satisfied customers? You give them a good product along with a discount. Once this is accomplished, then your business may desire to maximize profit. So let's again talk about revenue. Revenue equals price times quantity. Let's say you have a fleet of 80 seat buses that you charge $30 per seat. To increase the rental on your 80 seat buses, you incorporate the rental discount of 25 cents for every rider who brings a friend. This means that if you have one rider on the ADC bus, there is no 25 cent, per cent discount. Also, we know that renting your bus to just one rider on the ADC bus is not economical. We would probably limit, have a limit on the number of people that could rent an ADC bus. But let's continue saying that we would obtain enough people to warrant renting them the ADC bus. What's revenue again? Revenue equals price times quantity. So if you give each customer besides the first customer a 25 cent discount, means this, an organization calls to rent your bus for a trip. They need an 80 seat bus and the customer says 70 employees, including the caller, will be riding on the bus. Then how many customers will get a 25 cent discount? Okay. The discount equals 25 cents times X minus 1, where X equals the number of discounts. For 70 customers, then discount equals 25 cents times 70 minus 1, minus the caller. So the discount equals 25 cents times 69, which is $17.25. Okay. What's price? Price is the amount you charge less the number of discount you permit. So price equals price minus discount. Okay. Therefore, your company is giving 69 riders a 25 cent discount. The total discount is Okay, now we have to subtract this discount from the original price to determine the price we will charge each customer. So, okay, so price equals price minus discount. Well, we already know our, what our discount is, and here's our equation for the discount, 25 cents times X minus 1. So price minus 25 cents 
times x minus 1. Okay. So now, what is the quantity? Well, quantity, revenue equals price times quantity. And initial quantity of riders is equal to zero because the bus is empty. Any riders added will come from our initial discounts at the customer order. And where X is equal to the number of discounts, so quantity equal the initial quantity of riders plus whatever X number of discounts we get, riders we get from the discounts, okay? So we have price times quantity, and quantity equals the initial quantity of riders plus any additional riders we get from giving discounts. Well, since our initial quantity of riders is zero, all we have quantity equal to is x. Let's keep going. Okay, then here is our final equation. Revenue equals price times quantity. Our price is price minus discount times x minus 1 times x, because that's all we have in quantity, where x is the number of riders. Okay, so now we have to maximize our revenue, our income, with respect to our maximum number of riders. So let's say our price is $30 for the first rider. Discount equal 25 cents for remaining riders. Our quantity, Q, is equal to zero. So revenue equals price times quantity is equal to price times quantity plus X. Remember, quantity plus X. But quantity is zero, so all we have is X. And price is price minus discount. And so our price is $30. Our discount is 0 .0.025 times X minus 1 times X. That's our revenue equation. Let's multiply this out. So mathematically, we have X. I've just moved X to the other side. So we call this F of X. Uh, F, F of X means F is a function of X. Okay. So X times 30 minus 0 0.25 times X minus 1, where X is the number of riders. Because we gave that many of riders a discount. Okay. Now multiply this out. Oh boy, I dropped my chewing gum. Anyway, multiply this out. That's X times 30 minus 0 0.25 times X minus one. Our discount is 25 cents. So X times 30 is 30, 30 times X. X times 0 0.25 is 0 0.25 times X. And all of that is multiplied by X minus one. Then we multiply 0 0.25 X times X is 0 0.25 times X squared minus 0 0.25 times X squared and minus 0 0.25 X times minus 1 minus times minus is a plus so that leaves that plus 0 0.25 X and if we add our like terms we get minus 0 0.25 X squared plus 30.25 X so now we need to write this equation out in vertex form. Okay, this equation, we want to rewrite it in vertex form. The reason why is because it's going to be much more manageable and you will see what it, mean, what it looks like when we write it out in vertex form. Vertex form is here. F of X equals A times X minus H squared plus K. Now, don't let that frighten you. I just labeled these a little different. I'm going to show you what this means in a second. This is ninth grade algebra. But first, we have to do something we learned in ninth grade, and that's called completing the square. So let's do it. Okay. Here's our final equation. Minus 0 0.25 times x squared plus 30.25 times x. And here's a standard equation. Just like this, but it's standard. Okay, it has a coefficient a in front of the x squared. Our coefficient here is minus 2.5. And it has a coefficient b in front of the x, and our coefficient is 30.25. And it has a constant c. Well, we don't have a constant c in this equation. So our constant c is equal to zero. So let's convert this standard form into a vertex form. And here, is, here we go our standard equation. Let's move the number with no x to the left, the constant, okay? So we move the constant to the left. 
Once, whenever you cross the equal sign, you change the sign on the number or the constant. So that's on the value that you cross the equal sign. So it's plus on the right side, so it's minus on the left side. Now, let's factor out A. Well, here we have A times X squared plus B times X. So if I factor out A or move A outside of parentheses, then the A, I just have X squared. So when I multiply it through, I get A times X squared is AX squared. But there's no A in the BX. So I put an A in the denominator. So when I do multiply by A, they'll cancel out. It'll have an A in the numerator, A in the denominator, and that'll cancel. Okay. Now, okay, uh, here's our last equation. Uh, y minus C equals a times quantity x squared plus b over a times x plus the space. Okay. Let's take one half of the middle term, which is b over a. So one half of that is b over a over 2. Okay. So that's one half b over a. Then we want to square this term. So one half b over a squared. And that's b squared divided by 2 times 2 is 4 and a squared. Okay. Now add to the right side a plus and minus of the squared term. So then we have a plus and a minus of the squared term right here. Okay. Now we're going to move the minus squared term to the left side, but don't forget to multiply it by a, okay, because a is being multiplied by this. So a times the minus term is a times minus b squared over 4a squared. We're going to move that to the left. And so we move it over here and we put an a in front of it. And now all we have is the b plus plus b squared over 4a on the right hand side. Let's continue. Here's our last equation. Okay. Now we're going to multiply through by a on the left hand side. Well a a Divided by a squared, one of the a's cancels. So that's b squared over 4a. Okay. Now multiply c by 4 over 4 to make common denominator. Excuse me. And move left side to the right side of the equation and change the sign. So what we're going to do is this c over here, we're going to multiply this by 4a over 4a, which is 1. And now that's 4AC over 4A. And then we can, since they got the same denominator, we can add the numerators. And then we'll move it over to the left-hand side. Okay. So we add them. That's B squared over 4A minus 4AC over 4A. Okay. And then, then uh, this x squared plus b over a x plus b squared over 4 a squared. This is essentially x plus b over 2 a. Well, you remember we took one half of b over a? Well, we just put that inside the parentheses. x plus b over 2 a and square it. And that will equal this term right there. Okay. Okay, so our last equation is move the left uh move the loose number back to the right hand side, which we did here. And and convert to vertex form by factoring out a minus x. So if we factor out a minus x, a minus sign, if we factor out a minus in front of the x, we have minus times a minus is a plus. Okay. So and we do that to convert it to the form we had for our vertex form. And the above equation is a parabola. That's why we can recognize that. Okay, so now let's substitute our equation into this vertex equation. Okay, let's substitute our equation f of x into this vertex equation. Let's do it. Okay. Our original equation is minus 0 0.25 times x squared plus 30 plus 2.5x. f of x is equal to x, a times x squared plus bx plus c. Well, our a is minus 2.5, just like I said before, 
Our B is 30.25, like we said before, and our C is zero. So now all we got to do is substitute A, B, and C into our equation, okay? And if we do, do that substitution, we get Y equals minus 2.5X times X minus 60.5 quantity squared plus 915.0.26. 915.0625. Okay. Let's analyze our results. Our results. Y equals minus 2.5 times X minus 60.5 times quantity squared plus 915.0625. Our results say, how many discounts per riding customer do we need to maximize the revenue? Well, we need 60.25 discounts, okay? And what's the maximized revenue? $915.06. Okay, let's look at an Excel table and a chart and see what this means. You'll get a better explanation from a chart. Okay, I put this in an Excel sheet, and here is our data. So we have number of riders, and we have our gross profit. I should have this gross revenue, okay? Revenue, all right. Okay, let's, uh, okay. And I'll maximize the equation for discount of 25 cents. And here's our last equation right there, okay? So as we can see, as we move from one rider down to 80 riders, okay, our profit is maximized at 60.5 riders, as we have there, x minus 60.5. So when x equals 60.5, that's zero. 60.5 minus 60.5 is zero, minus 2.5 times zero is zero, so we're, our remainder is $915.06, and our profit is maximized. And you can see that's at the vertex of that parabola right there. Okay. At just above 60.5 riders, profits decrease with $0.25 cents discount. So here we are maximized at 60.5. But if we go down, we keep going, getting more and more seats, we lose profits. When we get up to 80 seats, let's say we can fill this bus up to 80 seats with a 25 cent discount. Our income will only be $820. So we're losing money at 25 cent discount. Also, a large number of seats can be purchased to decrease the profit. If you could discontinue the discount at 60 seats, this may anger your customers. So you, know, you may have a smart customer that can figure this out and say, hey, if we get 80 seats, it'll only cost us $820. Well, only 60 seats, you know, so if we can get 20 more people, we only pay $820. Okay. So let's take a look at this and see what discount we would have to get to maximize it, this at 80 seats. Let's look at that. Okay, let's look at maximizing at 80 seats. What's the discount we would have to maximize at 80 seats? Well, first, let's look at our previous problem. Okay, our previous equation was minus 2.5 times x minus 60.5 quantity squared plus 915 dollars and six cents. Okay. And this is our revenue equation. That's how we would divide, derive that equation. Well, remember we had a 25% a discount here, minus 0.25, okay? For a seat price of $30, the price of each seat is reduced 25 cents for every rider that invites a friend. That's where the X minus one comes from in the equation, okay? Our previous results was we need X equals 60.5 discounts. 
and we get out if we do that we get a maximized revenue of nine hundred fifteen dollars and six cents okay let's continue so here's our regular equation but this time we want to maximize the discounts to use up all 80 seats we, because we saw that the 25 cent discount only gets us to 66 so what is this discount let's figure that out but this time I'm gonna use calculus okay so here's our last equation okay and rather than 0 0.25 discount 25 cent discount I'm gonna put a D there okay for discount and then we're going to multiply that through. Just like I multiply it through by 0.25, I'm going to multiply it through by D, okay? And I get, after I do this multiplication, I get 30 times X, X times 30, and X times D minus D times X is DX squared minus DX squared. X times D minus 1 is minus D minus 1 is a plus, so it's plus DX. So then our equation, our revenue equation, is equal to 30x minus dx squared plus dx. Now, if I take the derivative in calculus with respect to x, dr dx, I get 30. Derivative of x is x is 1. Derivative of x is 1. That leaves 30. The derivative of dx squared is 2 times d plus times x. And the derivative of dx is only d. And I set that equal to zero because I want it to where the derivative is not changing, which is at the maximum. Okay. And so that is equal to zero. And then I move dx plus one over to the, or plus d over to the right hand side and leave 30 by itself on the left hand side. Then I factor out D, and that gives me D times 2X minus 1 equals 30. Then I divide through by 2X minus 1. Now, what is X? X is the number of discounts I need. Okay? Let's continue. So, if the discounts I want is 80 seats, I already know what the discounts I want. I want 80. So I put the 80 in for X, and that's 2 times 80 is 160 minus 1. That's 159. So therefore, I have D is equal to 30 divided by 159, and reduce that as equal to 10 over 53. And 10 over 53 is approximately 19 cents. So our new revenue equation is R equals 30 minus 10 over 53, which is 19 cents, times X minus 1 times X for the quantity. Okay, and after multiplication, we get minus 130, minus 30 divided by 159 X squared plus 1600 divided by 53 times X when we multiply this out. Okay. And uh, put this into the vertex form, we get X equals minus B over 2A, and the revenue is 4AC minus B squared over 4A. Okay, let's continue. So our new vertex equation is, as it was before, we now plug into the vertex equation A, B, and C, where X is defined as uh, where we previously discussed. So uh, A is equal to minus 30 over 159, right there. B is 1,600 over 53, right there. And C equals zero, okay? So there we go. So there's our A and B. So we plug A and B in there, and we get... Uh, B is 16 over 50, 1,600 divided by 53 minus that, divided by 2A, and A is minus 30 over 159, and then we do that multiplication, we get X equal 80, okay? Our profit is 4AC minus B squared over 4A, 
we plug in A and B into this equation. This is zero, and we get property that equals twelve hundred seven dollars and fifty five cents. Let's continue. Okay. All right. Let's maximize uh, our equation. So we got R equals A times X minus H squared plus K. Okay. Well, A is minus 30 over 159. K, as we saw before, is $1,207.54. And X is equal to 80. Okay. X equals 80. Okay. H, well, we call that H, but X equals uh, minus 80. Okay. Now let's look at an Excel table and chart. Okay, here now we have uh, same thing I had before, but this time I have 19 cents. So a number of riders, gross profit, I should have revenue there again. Revenue, okay. Okay, I'll maximize the equation, discount equal 19 cents. So here's 19 cents minus 19 times x minus 80 squared plus $1,207.55. Okay, so as we can see from our first rider, we have our gross revenue is $30. And if we go up to 80, 80 seats, if we get 80 seats filled, we get our maximum of $1,207.55. If we go up to 81 seats, our profits reduce. Okay, which we don't have 81 seats because our bus only has 80 seats. Okay. So, if we look at our chart, and if we follow the chart at the top of the vertex, we're maximized at 80. So, profits max, maximize at 80 seats with 19 cents discount. This way, buying up all the seats don't decrease the profits, and you're still giving a generous customer discount. That's neat. And that's what's called by maximizing your revenue determining how many products to sell. And you can do that with anything. Selling lemonade, selling candy, selling Girl Scout cookies. You can do the same thing. And that's the purpose of that. Maximizing your revenue. Okay. Okay. And uh, at, this is the conclusion. Uh, a business loves math and so should you. Math is uh, the way to success. One of the ways to success. I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed making it. And I'll see you again at a later time. And I'll give you another example of uh, maximizing profits. I hope you learned something. Until next time.